Hello, my name is Marcelo Barbosa, from Clarity Trainamentos, welcome to my channel on structure cabling. Today's issue is going to be a problem. One person reported it to me, he was having difficulties connecting two pieces of equipment at his home, and they were connecting at low speed. The Wi-Fi router connected to a 100 megabit internet provider, he'd installed a second device, a Wi-Fi router, an access point, about 50 meters away and run a Cat.5e cable, crimp the ends with RJ45, connected to the two devices, but then the speed, actually, between them became more or less 9 megabits per second, with the internet being 100 megabits and the equipment ports also, at least 100 megabits, and he posted this question on a social network, the staff helped him, but in the end, we saw what it was. The problem is with the cable. In fact, the quality of the cable is okay. It was not the quality of the cable, but the crimping of the RJ45 connectors at the ends. What had he done? He basically laid the cable and crimped the RJ45 directly, as he called it. This image on the side shows just how he did it. He connected the pairs sequentially. I don't know if this was the sequence of colors, but he connected the pairs sequentially, pin to pin, as if it were the cable. Then you can see the colors, white blue, white orange, white green, white brown, and he made the connector that way, but the speed was low. Why did this happen? Why? Although a Cat.5 slash Cat.5e cable that is crimped in this way gives a low speed. In theory, a Category 5 should be more than enough to pass 100 megabits. Cat.5e is enough even for gigabit Ethernet. In this other image you can see how the network cards, the Ethernet network ports, communicate. The transmitting and receiving ports are the ones that are grayed out on the right side. I have a port on pins 1, 2, another on 3, 6, 4, 5, and 7, 8. The 10 and 100 megabit Ethernet uses ports 1, 2, and 3, 6. 1 gig and 10 gig also use 4, 5, and 7, 8. In his case, he would only need ports 1, 2, and 3, 6. What happened on port 1, 2? He used a pair of wires, no problem. The problem was on port 3, 6. If you notice, see, pin 3 is connected to the white slash orange wire, and pin 6 is connected to the green wire, which is the wire that is twisted to another pair. But is that a problem? Yes. It is not enough to have the right pin to pin. The pins on the same network port would have to be from the same pair. And why is that? Let's see this other one, this other image. The Ethernet network transmission is balanced. This means that each transmission port takes the electrical signal and divides it into two equal and opposite signals. One signal goes through one wire in the pair, the other opposite signal goes through another wire in the pair. The idea of this transmission, called differential transmission, is to provide noise cancellation. Both the transmitted noise and the noise picked up from the other pairs of the cable or picked up from the environment. If this does not happen, if the two opposite signals do not travel on the wires of the same pair, they will not provide this cancellation. So, ideally, C, you have pins 1 and 2 transmitting through a pair, the two signals from one port, and on pin 3 and 6, which is the other port, it would be transmitting through the other pair. But what happened? On his cable, pins 3 and 6, which is a transmission port, are transmitting a signal on a wire of one pair, and pin 6 on a wire of the other pair. In this way, this port 3 and 6 will present a lot of noise, it will pick up noise and will throw a lot of noise inside the cable, which will be picked up by pin 1 and 2. So which one would be right? He would have to use a standardized pinout scheme, either the T568A or T568B. This is the image that shows exactly the crosstalk, which is the noise that happens from one pair to the other, which is what happened. He made this connection that presents pins 3 and 6 using the opposite signals in different pairs and this generated just that noise. The crosstalk. 
it will propagate in both directions of the cable and will disturb the receivers at the ends. This is one of the standardized pinouts. This is the T568B. He could have used the T568A, which only exchanges the orange and green positions. You can see that the orange pair makes port 1 and 2, and port 3 and 6 is served by the green pair. Note that in this way, both pin 3 and pin 6, which is a transmission port, is serviced by a single pair. So he is already able to do this noise cancellation scheme because the opposite signals will travel through par 3 and 6, which is green. In the case of 10 to 100 megabits, ports 4, 5 and 7, 8, blue and brown, are not used. So, in this case, it doesn't matter. If he had used the other pinout, it would be white slash green and green on pin 1 and 2, 3 and 6 would be white slash orange and orange. He fixed the cable, he mounted the pinout, if I remember correctly A, on the cable, on both ends of the cable, and it started to work at 100 megabits, without having to change cables. He just had to do the correct pinning. This is also a direct pinout because, if you look at pin to pin, there is no inversion. The difference is that the first way was the wrong one, where you don't respect the twists, you don't respect the division of the ports. This is the right direct cable for network transmission, transmission and cabling for twisted, structured cabling. You have a pin by pin, but you respect the transmission ports, not messing with that sequence. So that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave in the comments area your suggestions for next videos, problems you have with the cabling. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.